Do you know one of the best parts of reading the comments that viewers leave behind on my videos are the suggestions that they leave me, either that or the ideas that they inspire in me to make new videos. Well, that's what this video is all about. There are three videos that I put out recently, each of which are related, but it was the combination of, of comments from each of those videos that gave me the idea of what I'm going to share with you today. If you're interested in finding what that is, keep watching. So first off, what videos was it that people had commented on that gave me suggestions for this? Well, first off was the one on the Simple Theory Gear Pack Stove XL. And uh, that was great all by itself. And as you know, of course, that was given to me by Mac for testing and review. But the rest of the ideas came from other videos that I produced out of things that I made, the DIY projects. One, of course, was the Ikea hobo stove that I turned into a rocket stove by taking that cylinder, uh, that uh, canister, cutting the bottom off and putting it over the top. Tremendous response to that. People really found that interesting. And the third video was that introductory one I did around the flux wrap. The flux wrap being that material that you can turn and create into a stove. And uh, I put it out as a question more than a, than a video to introduce it to people to get some feedback. Well, the feedback on that one was tremendous. And one of the questions was, can that flux wrap be used to wrap around an IKEA stove to create the rocket stove? The answer is yes, and I'll demonstrate. And then of course, the next follow-up question is, what about wrapping it around the Pack Stove XL? And the answer is yes. But it was that second question that really stimulated me thinking about turning the pack stove into a rocket stove. And that's what we're going to focus on in this video. So first off, let me just take you down to the tabletop. I'll show you the things that we just talked about. We'll get outside and do some testing, of course. All right, before we get to the main topic of the vi this video, which of course is the Pack Stove XL and turning it into a rocket stove, I just wanted to l show you and address the other comments that were made about the IKEA Hobo Stove. So this is the one that I had turned into a rocket stove. And of course, if you're interested, if you haven't already seen that video, then I would recommend you go back because this is a tremendous performance increase by taking, in this case, it was a some type of a coffee or sugar canister that I cut the bottom off and placed it down over top of the IKEA and the rocket stove type performance, it's not a true rocket stove, of course, was very, very significant. So that was the original video that sparked whether or not this, the flux wrap, would work around it. Now, I think in fairness and, and an apology to the commenter, I was pretty sure this was not going to work. And I said, no, of course, that won't work. Well, it turns out it does. It works quite well. It Well, I say it's quite well. It's just the right size. So if you wrap this around the Ikea, you get about uh, three quarters of an inch overlap. And I see if I can show you that. It would be at the top of the screen where the overlap is. Uh, you get about three quarters of an inch overlap, but that's hard to use it like that because you have to have some way of uh, affixing, you know, closing this thing with some type of a clamp. And if you're going to use the clamps that come with the flux wrap, then you're going to have to open it up a little bit. And that also provides you a little bit more room for air to flow up the sides of the IKEA. So you get air between the flux wrap and the IKEA. Now you do anyway, that's one of the hallmarks of this flux wrap material is this waffle design allows for air to flow up the inside next to whatever you have it wrapped around with, presumably a stack of sticks because that's the way it's intended to be used, but it will work around the IKEA. I did try this, it's not for today's video, but I may do that in the future just to show you that it, it does work. And then of course you have to have a pots down. Now this is the, the, the three point cotter pin pot stand that comes with the flux wrap and it works quite well. And uh, I may use that today for this demonstration with the with the pack stove, but uh, uh, we'll set that aside for now. So yes, it does work. It works around the outside of the IKEA. So if you're looking for something, you can find a canister, you don't mind purchasing the flux wraps, this is, a, I think, a great use for them because it will improve the performance. If for nothing else, if you didn't want to use it like a rocket stove, just use it like a windscreen. Now, you will we'll have to find some way of keeping it open because it does want to close up around it, but that's not all that bad at work. Let me show you. You know, even if you set it up like that, 
you still have a great windscreen that's going to stay in place and allow you to feed sticks in, put a pot on top. Uh, yeah, so the flex rack works great for using with the IKEA. Now, let's set the IKEA back because that's not what we're talking about today. So here is the Simple Theory Gear Pack Stove XL, and I have one component missing that I have to grab. Excuse me. All right, I had to reach over and grab the speed ring because that's a component of how I'm going to demonstrate this. So we, this is a great stove all by itself. And we're going to have to talk about the philosophy of this stove again when it, in relation to whether or not we even should turn it into a rocket stove. But first, let's answer the questions that were asked. Does the flux wrap work with a pack stove? Yes, it does. Wraps right around very easily. Now you can see I don't have it off of the ground, so there is a little thing you have to do for that. And I made this up, which is made from a skewer, and it's just like a big C. And that runs through, very conveniently, through the grooves at the bottom of the stove, or not quite the bottom of the stove, but just just oh, maybe even a sixteenth of an inch off of the uh, fire grate, although that's not critical for this. Now if I wrap this around, it is off the ground. You can't feed it from the in the feed port. So, you know, really this is intended for a top-down preload type of a burn. So that's the way you feed it. Now, after the preload, is, you could feed it afterwards, of course. Now, this is where that tripod type of a stand will work, come into play, and you can put it on top. You don't have to use that, of course. You could use other things. Here's something that I tried. It won't quite work properly with the uh, flux wrap. And that is, what if all I want to use it for is a windscreen? Now, I'm putting the speed ring on top, on the very top position, on the crown of the stove, and I'm wrapping the flux wrap around it, and uh, it's quite a ways down. So, the pot I'm going to be working with today is my Stanley Adventure uh, Cook and coffee maker? I can't remember the right proper name for this. It's the one that's a French press style. What I'd like to be able to do at this time is to drop this in so it sits nicely on the speed ring. Actually, it does. I have about an eighth of an inch right at the top. So this pot will drop in, sit on the speed ring. So even if you're not looking to use the flux wrap as an enhancement to create a rocket stove out of the, out of the pack stove, you could use it as an effective windscreen. Now, it'll still act like a chimney. It'll still draw heat up. But now you're, you've brought your pot down to its original position on top of the uh, speed ring. So you're not going to get all the same effect Effect. What you are going to get is heat that's moving up that would have been wasted as it moved away from the stove is moving up the side of the pot. So all the pot is going to be in contact with either flame or heat. So this in itself is a great enhancement to the stove. Uh, maybe. Again, maybe because we have to talk about philosophy. So that was one thing I came up with. It's probably the easiest thing to do, but I took it a little further. Of course, I went back to Value Village and I searched around for another canister that I could cut the bottom off. Slightly smaller diameter than the first canister, which is actually kind of big for what I'm using it for on top of the pack stove. And uh, yeah, so now this one will sit on top much closer to the stove, not as close as the flux wrap, but very close to the stove and will do exactly the same thing and I've cut it a little bit shorter but it works perfectly as a windscreen around the stove and acts as a chimney to draw the heat up and uh, so you've protected the pot that you have sitting on top. Now of course this is only going to work with a smaller diameter pot, something that will nest inside of the Stanley. My 12 centimeter zebra is not going to go down inside but there's an answer to that of course. Now you've probably already noticed I drilled some holes in this. Now why did I do that? so that I can run a couple of stainless steel pegs through this. And now I can take advantage of some of that rocket stove effect, that chimney effect, by having the pot that I'm using above where it would have normally been. So it runs about another two and a half inches above the stove, but still sits inside of this ring. So it's still protected from the wind and the heat is running up the sides of the pot and it's getting a lot more heat than it would without it. If I wanted to use a larger pot, 
Now we're back to using either this triangular thing that came with the flux wrap, which is what I have been using, but a set of crossbars can be developed that uh, I would normally use for the IKEA, something made out of those stainless steel rulers that I pick up for a buck at Walmart. That'll work as well on top of this. You just have to size it for the diameter of the canister if that's what you're going to use. Uh, okay, let's just talk about philosophies for a second. And the reason we need to have this discussion is because I had a conversation with Mac after I came up with that idea. I did some preliminary testing and I shared it with Mac and he was interested and excited about the performance, but he was a bit conflicted because he wasn't sure if it was something he'd do, he should do. He did ask me my opinion and here's what I said. The whole premise behind the Simple Theory Gear pack stove is just that, simplicity. This is meant to be something you can take out of your bag. If you have a nesting pot with it, you take the pot out, you set it down, you build a fire, you put your pot on, and away you go. And it works perfectly, just the way it's designed. Does it need a performance enhancement? Well, I'll, I will say this, all stoves, it doesn't matter what stove, if it's alcohol, butane, or wood, or using pellets, or anything else for that matter, they all benefit from a windscreen. So regardless if you want it to be something like this canister or that flux wrap, one of those nine, seven or nine panel fold up panel windscreens, they work perfectly good for this as well. I say they benefit from, from a windscreen if it's a windy day. I mean, if it's not a windy day, you probably can get away without it. But if it's at all windy and Murphy's Law, it's always windy when I go out, it seems, I like to carry a windscreen screen or put it somewhere that I can block it with rocks or whatever to just give it some wind protection. Uh, so back to the concept. This is simplicity all by itself. Is the performance increase worth the complexity of adding yet another component to the stove? Uh, I'm not sure that it is. I mean, you know, from, from a, a, an interest point of view, it was great to be able to see that it works and that you can do that. But should it be something, and this is probably the bigger question, should it be something that Mac explores and adds to his stove as something that he offers on his website as an accessory to go with? I think what I'd like to do is ask you what your thoughts are. As you'll see when we get outside and do some tests, it does increase the performance dramatically and you know it gives a lot more heat in a very concentrated area, especially when a pot that will nest inside of the windscreen. It also goes through the wood very quickly. So, you know, there, there is that side of it as well. If you're looking for a fast burn that's protected from the wind, then it will definitely answer that, that question. Other than that, should this be added to the, to the stove or should it be just left the way it is? And if the consumer who buys one of these wants to add something to it that they have the option of looking for something they can use themselves. Again, the fold-out windscreens or uh, an aluminum oven liner that's been folded into shape works fine. Even a piece of that carbon felt will work. Although, you know, you have to make sure it's not gonna fall down or blow away. All those things will work for wind protection. Having something like this adds not only wind protection, but the chimney effect and enhances the performance. When I say enhance, I mean it enhances the speed at which you can bring water to a boil. Uh, that's not the only thing you're doing with the stove, of course. So again, is it, what are you using the stove for? And do you really want or even need that performance enhancement? Okay, I'm gonna leave that question to you to answer in the comments, but let's get outside and play with the stove and turn it into a rocket stove. All right, I've moved into my backyard testing station and I have the pack stove set up for a burn. Now, uh, I was looking around my stores of wood and I don't have anything short enough to fit inside of the stove stacked vertically where I can put the speed place on, plate on. Everything is longer than that. But I just want to show you again that how you might use this. Let's bring it around so the feed port is in front. And the reason why a preload and a top-down burn will is the, really the only reasonable way of using it at this point is because once you get the chimney on, you don't have access to the feed port. 
Uh, there are some advantages I'll demonstrate in a minute. So, of course, I could do one of two things feeding the wood in. If the wood had all been shorter than the top of the stove, then I could just place the speed ring on top and use it like you normally would, but with the chimney over it and the pot. Well, let's set it up so we can see what I'm talking about. I think I showed it, but let's just, once again, I'll put this again. Here is that stainless steel skewer. This is only intended for a support for the chimney that I'm going to use so that it will sit up off of the ground. So once again, sitting on top like that, uh, yeah, I have to have the food, or the food, I have to have the wood in and the fire started. So, yep, this will work if I put that on top. This is definitely going to work like this, but I won't be able to do any feeding of wood. So, let's pre-stack the, the stove, and I'll show you the advantage. Take the speed ring off, so this still has to stay in. But now, I'm going to preload the stove. In fact, why don't I just break away for a second while I do this, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I have preloaded the uh, the XL with some wood, and what you can see is that they're all, every one of them, are above the top of the stove, so the speed ring just won't go on. Now, some of them are actually quite tall. Now, this will still work with the chimney, but, uh, you know, not with the speed ring. Here's the advantage. I can use longer sticks. I can have a much greater fuel load in the stove than I could otherwise if I was trying to go for a top-down burn. Now, you know, I know, yes, Otherwise, I probably would have just fed sticks in through here and have a more controlled burn. But again, for this demonstration, it's all about the rocket stove performance, and that mandates that I do it this way. So here's what I'm going to be doing. Some of those sticks are long enough that they're interfering. I guess what I'll do to start is I'll take these two uh, pegs out. And I'm going to start by using this on top. This is the triangular thing from the flux wrap. And I will want to demonstrate this, and I will back up a little bit once the fire gets going to show you. But I will demonstrate that, you know, this is how I'd use it if I had a pot larger than the diameter of the canister that I've, um, I've cut off for this. But then I'm going to insert the pegs so that you can see the, the Stanley here is sitting down inside a little bit. So let's get this fire started. So for this today, uh, I'm trying something out that was sent to me. Nowhere near ready yet to give you my thoughts on it. Um, I mean, it's a pretty simple thing that we've got here. And basically what it is, this is from Bigfoot Bushcraft. This is what they call their fire plugs. It's a waxed cotton of some type. You kind of work it until you get some material exposed from the center like that, hit it with the lighter or ferrocerium rod, see it lights up, I'm dropping that down inside. Now that by itself will probably work, but it would take quite a bit of time. So I've just got a few more twigs and these are little pieces of wood that were soaked in wax somebody gave me as a, you know, almost like a, a, a man-made, I think that's cedar in fact, like a man-made fat wood. So this will just accelerate the burn a little bit. And that's all we're going to do. So it's going to take a few minutes, obviously, before that fire is engaged. I'll bring it back at that point. I'll reposition the camera so you can get an idea of uh, the performance that this is creating. And this is interesting. I'm looking in the viewfinder, and I can see the flames rising above the chimney. And you, I'm, I'm hoping you can see them as well. But what you can't see is, as they come above the top of my testing station, they're whited out by the background, which is the, the sky, of course. But the flames are reaching eight, nine inches above the top of that. So you're only seeing a small portion of the flame that's rising up. So let me put the pot on. Now, we're not going to watch this right through to full boil. I just wanted to give you an idea of how well this works. We're going to make some changes to this in a second. Um, yeah, once again, I do have that little uh, cotter pin tripod or tri setup for a pot stand on top of this. It works well on the canister. I could have easily made up a, a set from stainless steel rulers like I would for an Ikea. Uh, I just didn't want to bother it for this point, to be quite honest. I think you get the idea that this will is required if you're looking to use a pot larger than the diameter of the uh, that of the chimney itself. But uh, you can see how well the performance is working. The flames are coming up. Uh, 
but you can't see again is <laughs> interesting. The flames are actually rising higher than the Stanley. And again, you can't see it because of the white oak background. I'll try and give you another view from another angle. Uh, in a second, I'm going to put the two crossbars in the pegs that I have through those holes so that I can set the pot down inside a little bit, a little closer to the flame. But let me reposition the camera and give you an idea just how much high the flame is running above this. So just a little bit of a different angle so you can see the flames rising up the side of the Stanley. That is near rocket stove performance. I always say near because it's not a true rocket stove. I'm going to take the Stanley off and look, give you a view right down inside with the flames. Impressive performance. The camera right now is five, almost five feet above the flame, so I'm well out of harm's way. But you can see just how high the flames are rising and how uh, voracious it is in terms of eating up the wood inside. All right, so I, I have removed the little tripod thing off of the pot stand off of the top, put the pins in so that I can set the Stanley down inside. This I see as a real advantage because of course now that is protected from the wind. One of the things I wanted to see was what kind of dampening took place. And there is a little bit. Let me just put the, there. Okay, it's centered a little bit more. But the flames are coming in contact, not only with the bottom of the pot, but they're rising up the side of the pot. And uh, so that pot is getting much more heat than it would without the chimney on top of it. And it's still two and a half, three inches above the height of the stove. And yes, we do have a hard rolling boil. That didn't take long at all. Let's take that out. Uh, here's something I wanted to mention, and I don't know if I covered this adequately in my review of the XL, and that is things that you should probably have with you. So Mac always recommends a set of pliers to have with. Now, I usually have my one of my Leatherman multi-tools, one of my smaller ones with me, because it's useful removing the pot or the speed ring on and off of the stove when it's hot. But here's something else I like to use quite often. These are the Coglins pot grippers. Uh, you know, they're only, what, two bucks or so? And what you can do with that is you can lift the whole chimney on or off. So if you had started with a smaller burn and you wanted to, you know, using it just uh, the way it was intended originally, but then you wanted to add the chimney on afterwards, you could do that without risk of hurting yourself by using the pot grippers. All right, let's wrap this video up. All right, so that was quite interesting, the, the test results that we had from the testing the pack stove with the canister over the top. As you can see, the rocket stove or rocket stove type performance is significant. It is a huge uh, leap in performance over just the stove by itself. But again, the question is, is this something that should be considered an, in addition to the stove? Or should it just remain the pack stove as is? I will share my personal preference, which is leave it as it is. I like doing these DIYs and uh, uh, seeing what I can get out of a stove, seeing how I can enhance it. I give that information to Mac and I allow Mac to use it as he feels best, of course. And I know part of his decision will be informed by the comments that you leave under this video and whether you think it's something that Mac should uh, do. It's not a hard thing to do yourself. And if you're not much of a DIY person or you can't find a, a canister like, like that, that was of the right size. And by the if I haven't said that, I'll put the dimensions of everything that I have used here in the video description underneath so that you can go out and find one for yourself if that's what you want to do. But again, the bigger question, should you do it? Just because you can increase the performance of this stove, does that change this from a simple, easy to use, packable stove to something more? Well, I think, I, even though I said my preference is to leave it as it is, I think there may be times when you want to do that. Look at the, the windscreen performance performance that worked with that Stanley pot. Now, not quite the same benefit from a windscreen performance if I use something larger, but for the Stanley, it seems to work really well. And by the way, uh, they all seem to, st well, they all seem, they all do fit in the original bag that Mac uh, sends with the Mac Stove XL. Okay, enough rambling. 
I showed you just one simple demonstration just to give you an idea of what could be accomplished by adding some type of a chimney around the pack stove. But what I'm most interested in is what your thoughts are on this combination. Is it something worth pursuing? Is it something that you think Mac should look into? Or do you just want to leave it to those people who feel that they want to do it themselves as a DIY project? All right, that's everything for today. Get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.